Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, here a few months ago, I released a video showing how to set up a Docker container uh, that just had Firefox in it for isolation purposes, whether it was for safer browsing or testing things out or, or whatever the case may be that you might want to use an isolated version of Firefox for. Shortly thereafter, uh, a company called Chasm or Chasm Web, uh, their, their logo says Chasm, their URL is Chasm Web, reached out to me to uh, point me in the direction of their Docker offering. So in this video, Video, I kind of want to show you what Chasm or Chasm Web uh, has to offer and how easy it is to set up some of their uh, instances here. So if we take a quick look at their website here, we can see that we're at chasmweb.com. And uh, the first thing they feature right here is Chasm Workspaces, the container streaming platform. And there's there's a couple of different ways we can go about using these workspaces. And I wanna show you just quickly uh, both of those uh, so that we can kind of cover a bunch of stuff. So uh, here, first off, you know, it says browser isolation, just like we talked about in that Firefox video. However, they've got their own version of that that they've built kind of from the ground up. Next, we've got uh, remote workspaces. So this provides a secure desktop as a service to employees and vendors, basically a full-fledged uh, Linux desktop with uh, apps installed and ready to go that you've got full control over. And then app streaming with things like uh, VLC and, and that, that sort of thing. Uh, below here, we can see that uh, we've got Docker, we've got AWS, we've got DigitalOcean, which I'm also gonna touch on very, very quickly. Uh, specifically, we're gonna talk about Docker and DigitalOcean in this video. And then below that, there's actually a little video that kind of shows uh, very quickly kind of what's going on there. And I will leave uh, links to all of this, including that specific video in the description down below. So if we jump over to their uh, their their docs, their documentation, uh, we can see that they've got a bunch of default images that you can use. Uh, all of these are available. Uh, if you want more information, of course, you can just click over, uh, you know, to any of these and it'll take you over to their hub.docker.com. And then uh, right here, you can actually see uh, how recently uh, each image was was updated. In fact, if we come back over to just their their profile page, you can see that they're, they're very active. All of this has been updated very recently. Uh, and you can also see that they are a verified publisher with Docker. So uh, great stuff going on here. They've got lots of different uh, options here for containers that you can run. Um, in fact, if we take a look, like we can do, like this is just a Firefox container. That's all it is, is just Firefox. Uh, just like we showed in a previous video, I think back in August. Uh, if you wanted to take it a step further, uh, here is just a, a standalone instance of Discord. In fact, this is my Discord server up and running. Uh, of course, this is just like a desktop app running uh, in a Docker container here. Uh, so it, it's not gonna give you anything additional, uh, but if you ever wanted to just quickly spin up uh, an instance of, uh, of Discord, you can can see uh, it, it's right there and easy to use. Um, however, I did run into an issue here and uh, you'll notice that I this is Chasm Web uh, slash Discord and then 1.9.0. I put that up in the browser so that I would remember uh, this doesn't actually show up in the browser, uh, the URL bar, but uh, I got to here and it wouldn't let me do anything else. So if we come back over here, we can see that I had to use the, I had to add rolling to that tag to make it work. Um, so just sometimes you may have to uh, append the, the tag on your image to make it work. Uh, if updates haven't been done uh, recently enough, uh, that is one way you can get around that. We've also got uh, here a sent OS 7 desktop with Google Chrome and Firefox, uh, all set up and ready to go. Uh, just all you've got to do is just log in and you're good. Uh, you can take it a step further here. Uh, here we've got their deluxe desktop um, with all kinds of pre-installed applications here as well. If you wanted a more, uh, a more ready to go instance. And then one last thing over here, there's Doom, like old school, original Doom running in a browser. Well, of course running in a Docker container, but uh, running in a browser. Um, but then over here, we've also got uh, Chasm Workspaces. Now this is actually uh, deployed on DigitalOcean. They've actually just got like a one-click install. Uh, basically you click it, you say, this is what I want. Uh, you put in your credentials and click go. And a few minutes later, you've got this, where you can at any point, just select any of these applications that you wanna run. Uh, let's say we wanted to run Brave. We just click that. Uh, here it says, hey, that's, that's what this is. We click launch session. We give it a second, and now we're creating uh, a, a Brave instance inside uh, this Chasm workspaces. And then when you're done uh, with these, you can just come over here 
and click delete session or log out. Um, I'm just gonna click on delete session. And then it's like that Docker container never existed. Um, so for additional security, you could definitely do something like that. Just a quick note here. If you don't wanna use a third party solution like DigitalOcean, Workspaces is available to install locally. And if you're interested in a video on how to do that, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll make a dedicated video on how to install Workspaces on a local distribution of Linux. We've covered a lot just very, very quickly. I wanted to kind of run through uh, what all of those different things are. And of course, those are just examples of what you could do if you wanted to. Again, if we come back over to here, we can see all of the different uh, images that they have available that you can spin up uh, very, very easily. So let me show you how to go about doing that. Uh, let's come over to here. Nope, right here. So basically uh, you've got this, this Docker command line right here that you can run. Uh, you can just copy that um, and then modify it. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's go over to... Do. All right, so here we've got this. Let's oops, make this a little bigger uh, so that it's easier to see here. And if I paste that in there, okay, that's not gonna work because I didn't actually put an image name in there. So uh, what we'll do is um, change that. We also all need to change the port here because I'm already using that. I'm gonna change it to 6910. And then for Chasm Web, let's come over to here and just pick something randomly that I have not deployed yet. Um, do, do, do. Let's do only Office 1.9.0. Uh, we'll go ahead and just paste that in there. Um, and then everything here should be good to go. I do think though, uh, in fact, I talked to uh, I talked to them about this to run this in detached mode so that it's not dependent on uh, this terminal window staying open. So we should recognize, oh, huh, you know what helps? It helps <laughs> if I log into my server first, 192.1, is darn it, one six eight one dot one eighty three, uh, like so. All right, let's scroll back up and let's grab uh, this line right here. And we'll go ahead and paste that in there like so. And we'll click go. Now it's saying it can't find it. Um, here's a bunch of stuff that, it's, that says already exists. Now, we talked about this a, a little bit. The the I talked with Chasm about this a little bit. Um, and they've, they've kind of got a base image that all of their containers are built on. And that's why uh, some of this was already exists is because it's already part of that base image. So now it's just going to do the additional downloading. Now, uh, the first time you go through and install one of their images, you will have to download all of the stuff that mine already says already exists now. So let's let, while this while this is doing its thing, let's actually jump over here to Portainer. Do, do, do. Where is it? It's not there. 183. There we go. We'll come into here. Like, so here you can see I've got, um, I've got Discord, Firefox, Doom, uh, a different version of Discord, CentOS Desktop, and uh, Desktop Deluxe, uh, all running on different ports here, like you can see over here on the right side. Now, if we come over to images, <clears throat> we're going to see that like Brave is a 1.6 gig download. Uh, CentOS is 3.2, Desktop Deluxe is 5.2, Discord's 1.5 gigs, um, Doom is 1.4, Firefox 1.5. Um, so these are some fairly substantial image sizes and that's just kind of one of the things that they decided to do to have a base image to build off of. So some of these are gonna be fairly bloated uh, in, in my opinion, but they, they do have their reasons for it. Um, but that's just one of those things to keep in mind is some of these image sizes are very, very large uh, for what they do. So something to keep in mind, especially if you've got an internet service provider that, it, that gives you a data cap. Um, I, I don't think you're gonna, you're gonna cap out downloading these things unless you do it a bunch, but just something to be aware of that some of these images are fairly substantial in size here. So let's come over to here. Okay, that's good to go. Uh, all up and running here. So let's go back over to our containers. And we did uh, only office right here. Uh, and if I click this, it didn't work. And that's because it's got a, a self signed certificate built into it. So we have to add HTTPS like so, and then say, yes, I understand it's, it's not actually private. And then um, chasm underscore user is the default username and then password for the password there. And that was actually set or not here is, there it is. Uh, we actually set the VNC password right there. You can change that. Um, so we come back over to here. Now we've got 
Um, well, now it's going to give us the option to uh, monitor your clipboard so you can copy and paste back and forth. If you want to do that, go for it. Uh, I would say probably for only Office, that's probably not a terrible idea. Um, so you can do that, open a new document, and uh, just have that, whatever you need to do there, it's up and ready to go. So there's another way that you could deploy these things. And if you were to go to Portainer here and go to Stacks, uh, we can add a stack and just paste that in there. Um, and this is just is saying, hey, there's uh, a problem, a bad indentation. Um, so yeah, there's... There we go. I'll make sure that that's fixed, but I will have that linked in the description down below uh, over to uh, over to GitHub where I've got this. And of course, like this says here, uh, change the ports as necessary, change the password as necessary, change the shared memory size as necessary, and then you will want to change uh, the actual image to whatever it is you're trying to deploy. Very, very simple to do. Uh, but let's just go ahead and come over here and let's just make that 11. Um, and then we're gonna call this Firefox like so, and then we'll scroll down and click on deploy. This should go fairly quickly as I've already got Firefox downloaded uh, on my system. So we'll give this just a moment here. There we go. And then Firefox right here. Uh, that's the one we just deployed on 11. So we come over to here. Again, I have to add HTTPS like so and say yes, and then say proceed and then uh, chasm underscore user and then password. And there is your Firefox instance just that quickly and easily. So again, I will have all of this linked in the description down below so that you can check out all of these resources that are available through Chasm, uh, through hub.docker.com uh, that you can deploy either via command line or uh, via Portainer, just like you saw me do there as well. Um, there is also, uh, I'll put a link down there if you wanna check out uh, the, the digital ocean uh, setup that I showed very briefly, again, over here, uh, where you you can just deploy a dashboard and then and uh, just on a on, on the fly, on a whim, whatever, deploy any of these containers um, and destroy them and redeploy them and however many times you want to do that. I'll have a link to that in the description down below as well well. So there you go, guys. Uh, there is Chasm, Chasm Web, uh, and kind of the services that they offer via a self-hosted solution or via a third party, uh, whether it's through AWS or, or DigitalOcean. Uh, lots of options to, to isolate stuff here or set up a remote desktop situation uh, that you would always have consistent access to uh, very, very easily. So hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Really would help me out quite a bit. Also, I want to give a big shout out to Chasm Web for reaching out to me. They actually reached out to me a couple of months ago and I completely spaced it. So uh, thanks to them for reaching back out to me uh, to remind me, hey, you should you should check this out. It's actually pretty neat. So uh, so big shout out to them. Uh, definitely check them out again. Links with everything in the description down below. Uh, while you're down there, there are also some different ways you can support the channel, whether it's through channel memberships, uh, Patreon, PayPal, whatever. Uh, I'll have links to everything in the description down below. Um, but I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.